Good evening, and welcome to the regular meeting of the City of Glendale Commission on the Status of Women. Roll call, please. Vice Chair Burns. Present. Commissioner Devine. Here. Commissioner Kajayan. Ex officio Mersakanian. Present. Ex officio Sahakian. Present. Commissioner Wiseman. Present. Chair Miller. Present. Thank you, Ms. Hidalgo. Next item on the agenda, please. At 1A, we have a report regarding the posting of the agenda. The agenda for the September 9th, 2013 meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside of City Hall on or before September 6, 2013. Going on to item number two, introductions and presentations at A, introductions of student ex officio commissioners, Rima Sahakian and Ivanthea Mersakanian. Welcome. On behalf of the Glendale Commission on the Status of Women, it brings us great pleasure to welcome our new students. I want to start first over here on my left with Evanthea Merzakanian. Evanthea is from Crescenta Valley High School. She is a Presidential Award winner. She is part of the Western Association of School and Colleges. She has a Certificate of Proficiency in Health Organizations. She is a part of, she is president of Passion for Compassion, an organization she created. Um, and she has a lot of ambition, a lot of passion about women's issues. She is very poised and composed. <laughs> <laughs> she has a lot of great energy and just is a pleasure to listen to. So welcome. Thank you very much. On my right over here is Rima Sahakian. Rima is from Hoover High School. She is a lifetime member in the California Scholarship Federation, a three-time recipient of the President's Gold Service Award, and the President's Academic Excellent Award recipient. With her 4.4 grade point average, um, it's amazing all of these awards that followed her. Um, Ms. Sahakian has a very interesting start of her legislative and po political career. She knew in the second grade that she wanted to be in a forum like this. She counts as one of her heroines, uh, Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. She, pre she presented on that. She has held many offices, uh, both vice president and president in her elementary, middle, and high school. Welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. And what we thought we would do is have you say just a few words. Each of you will start back over here with Evan Thea. Tell us a little bit in the commission and the city about yourself. Well, it's an honor to be a part of this commission, and I am ecstatic to be with such an honorable group of women, and I cannot wait to start the year with such an amazing group of women and make it a very memorable year, and I am extremely honored and humbled for your position on choosing me. Thank you very much. Um, likewise, I am very honored to be here, and first of all, I would like to thank everyone who took time to read the numerous applications and for the interview, and um, because of the fact that we were the two chosen, I think it's a very privileged position, and it's going to be a very rewarding and worthwhile year, and I am very enthusiastic about the various things that I'm going to learn this next year, especially because it's going to be a supplement towards my future career. So it's great to be here. Thank you so much. Great. And I want to thank Commissioner Kajoyan as well as our city staff, Teresa Alexanian, for joining me in the nomination process of these wonderful and standout student ex officios. Uh, Commissioner Kajoyan, did you want to add anything? Thank you, Chair Miller. Ms. Rima, Sahagian and Ms. Eva Mirzakhanian both were passionate, full of energy, and excited to be part of the commission, and passionate about women's issues, women's rights, and equality. I was so impressed with their being active members in their school, both dedicated hours of community service and, lead, and their leadership in a school club. Thank you, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the very kind words. It's an honor. <laughs> Thank you. OK. Well, welcome. And we um, are very pleased to have one of our student ex officios here with us, Serene Jerubian, in the audience um, here to witness your first time as you've gone on. So thank you. OK. Next item on the agenda, please. 
Next we have item 2B, Perseverance, Defeating Debilitating Disease, Michelle Jobson, DNP, MSN, ED, CNRN, Clinical Program Stroke Coordinator at Glendale Adventist Neuroscience Institute, and Carol Buss, a stroke survivor. Thank you, Ms. Hidalgo. Michelle Jackson has been a registered nurse for over 18 years with a background in neurocritical care and emergency care. She is currently in her role as the Stroke Clinical Program Coordinator for the Glendale Adventist Medical Center since the inception of the Advanced Primary Stroke Center in 2007. She is passionate for the care of stroke patients and in ensuring that they receive the best care and the best outcomes. With her today is one of their pa patients, Ms. Carol Buss, who is um, she was an elementary teacher in North, uh, Northern California with a master's in English who moved to LA and started working with her husband and their printing business. Thank you for both being here today with us. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Miller, commissioners, and city staff. Thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to share with you some of the miracles that happen at Glendale Adventist, an advanced primary stroke center. Tonight you will hear a story of a woman who suffered a massive stroke on, and who has persevered a debilitating illness. She has survived the fourth leading cause of death in the United States and what affects one person every 40 seconds. Almost 800,000 people suffer from the debilitating effects of stroke every year. I first met Carol in the afternoon of June 17th. She was having lunch with her girlfriends at a nearby restaurant, celebrating a special day, her birthday. What was thought to be a pleasant afternoon turned around as she was rushed to the Glendale Adventist by the EMS via a 911 call. My stroke alert pager went off and the overhead announcement throughout the hospital alarmed that a stroke patient was on the way to our emergency room. This ensured that as soon as Carol arrived in the ER, she would be met by specially trained neuro nurses and doctors. Upon her arrival, I saw a woman who was completely paralyzed on one side of her body and her speech was very slurred. The emergency staff and the stroke team worked together quickly in order to ensure timely treatment of her stroke. So the question is, why all the rush? For every minute wasted, about two million brain cells die. These brain cells do not regenerate and will never be used again. These brain cells could have been Carol's ability to walk, to talk, or as an artist in Carol's case, to draw. We wanted to treat her immediately with TPA, a clot buster, a life-saving treatment to restore blood flow to her brains. In Carol's case, we could not afford to waste another minute. Upon arrival, she was met by the stroke team of specially trained physicians and nurses already waiting for her. In only three minutes, her labs were drawn and immediately processed. In only 12 minutes, the CT scans were already completed, ready for the stroke team to evaluate. With the efficiency of the stroke team, we were able to administer this life-saving treatment within only 47 minutes of Carol's arrival to our ER. This is well below the national average of 96 minutes. I would like to turn this over to Carol, who is the living proof that world-class care is within reach here at Glendale Adventist Stroke Center. Uh, good evening, uh, Chair Miller, commissioners, and city staff, and student ex officio members. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. I can take my cane and raise it over my head. I bring it for safety. Now, I was just reading an article called Mind Over Misery in my Stanford magazine. And that's what I have done, is I have put my mind over any misery I could have. To me, the staff and the treatment has been a blessing. Helen Reddy said, I am woman, I can do anything, and I have in defeating my debilitating disease with all the people around me. Wonderful doctors, wonderful nurses, occupational therapists, physical therapists, speech therapists. I can't even name them all. Bobby McFerrin said, don't worry, be happy. 
and your life expects some trouble. If you worry, make it double. Every day is an adventure in healing for me. Don't worry, I just try to accomplish with a smile on my face. I persevere, but I also perseverate. Now, perseveration is a term that has a negative meaning in psychiatry, such as repeating negative behavior and mistakes. But in my case, I perseverate in doing household tasks that are healing to me. Are you have questions, or shall I hold my cane over my head? <laughs> you um, did you recently start driving again? Yes. Did I hear that when just about two weeks, and I have not driven far. And your stroke again was June seventeenth. Seventeenth. Happy birthday. It was, I had two birthdays. I had the birthday that was my birthday, and I had the birthday of being saved. Uh, do we have questions? I'd, I'd just like to make a comment to, uh, to you, Carol, to uh, congratulate you on your courage. You know, this commission honors women of courage, and you are certainly one of them. And I know we have many in the community, but you are a standout, and I... I, I wish you all the best. Um, I would like to ask, um, is it Jacobson? Jackson. Jackson, I'm sorry. Uh, a couple of questions about cause and prevention of stroke. You can stay together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stay here. Mm -hmm. um, stroke is one of the, uh, you know, debilitating diseases, right? And fortunately with that, there's a lot of uh, ways we could prevent it. And that's a really good way of, um, you know, beating this is actually to prevent it. So with diet and exercise, controlling blood pressure, um, looking at our risk factors, those are really some ways, you know, you don't want to start this if we could prevent it. You know, and we have wonderful, you know, physicians at our hospital that could really help with that. Um, we do also have um, some educational seminars um, that we could, you know, invite you to. Um, Denise, maybe we could also post it within the commission or um, some of the um, outreach program that we do uh, for, you know, stroke prevention and stroke education. Uh, one thing I do want to mention also is recognizing the symptoms of stroke because just as you see with Carol here, you know, time really was very important in order to save those millions of brain cells, two million brain cells every minute, right? So we can't wait. Once we recognize those stroke symptoms, we should be calling 911. And I like to use the mnemonic FAST. So if you can remember FAST, uh, we could really remember, you know, what we should do when we see these symptoms. F being facial drooping. Uh, with Carol's ca case, when you look at her face, immediately when, I, when she walked into our ER or was brought in by the EMS, one side of her face was drooping. Uh, a is arms. We asked Carol to raise her arms in one side of her body. She could not lift it. It was paralyzed. So the motor weakness uh, on one side of your body. The S for speech. You ask the patient to repeat, you know, can you repeat, or can you say your name? Uh, sometimes the patient either cannot speak or what's even more pronounced is when they have the slurring of the speech, like you've just had a little more than a glass of wine, you know, <laughs> when you're speaking. And then T would be for time. So we gotta call 911, we should not wait. Uh, right away call 911 so that we can take you to the nearest stroke center and receive those life-saving treatment. With Carol's case, she actually received the medication called TPA. That stands for Tissue Plasminogen Activator, and that is a medication that we could give to treat stroke. So there is a treatment for stroke. But the important thing is we need to get the patients in the hospital in the time frame. We cannot wait. Had Carol, you know, friends and, you know, loved ones did not recognize the stroke and waited, then we would not have been able to give her the treatment. The treatment is within the three hours of the stroke symptom. The faster we can treat, the less brain cells that we, you know, affect, the better the outcome is. And like I said, Carol is a living proof of that. And Carol, you were um, you were at lunch, or you were celebrating your birthday I was at the time. Celebrating my birthday at lunch with a friend uh -huh. who 
recognized when I turned away, she thought I'd turned away to cough. And when I turned away, she saw my eyes glazed over and she grabbed my cell phone because I had driven to the restaurant. And she just started calling. And the fire department was two doors away eating lunch. And <laughs> Michelle saw the fire department coming to Cafe Beaujolais. I'm not publicizing oh, this. <laughs> and she's, because she lives nearby, and she says, somebody's going to be in our hospital right away. Oh, and Michelle did some wonderful oh. things. I want to thank her very much from the bottom of my heart. She saw that I had a private room every time and I didn't have any commotion. Now, all of my signs that would have said stroke, stroke, stroke were not obvious at all. But I know what caused it. S-T-R-E-S-S, -S, stress. So I do nothing stressful anymore. If it's stressful, I don't do it. Good for you. That's wow. Yeah. Words to live by, story. huh? Terrific Pardon? Story. Terrific story. Wonderful. I'm Thank so you. proud of you. It's been, it's been a wonderful experience. What, what? And I was just released from physical therapy outpatient to physical therapy last Thursday. Car Carol's a good reason for us to support the downtown dash, isn't she? Absolutely. It's right? every year on March. Say that. We have the 5K downtown dash, and it's to raise awareness for stroke because we do have treatment for it, and we just need to get it to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair Miller. Anybody else? Great. Okay. That was very moving and inspirational. <coughs> okay, next item on the agenda. Item three is oral comment. I don't have any cards. We seen that we have no other speakers. The item is closed. So we'll go to the next item on the agenda, please. Item four, consent items A, approval of the minutes of the regular commission meeting held on August 12, 2013. Are there any changes that the commission would like made to the minutes, or is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Madam Chair. Yes. I think we have dates that are, are not correct on our... Um, calendar. We are looking at October 1st for a council proclamation presentation. In the, uh, in the regular meeting agenda, it showed as October 8th. So I think that we need to give some consideration to which date we are going to use. Other than that, the minutes seem to be fine. Now, Ms. Alexanian, can we um, approve the minute? Are there any other, by the way? Okay. Ms. Alexanian, can we approve the minutes as, as stated and circle back with that issue during the domestic violence awareness events, or should we take that event now? The, um, the discussion on the day. Ma Madam Chair, the minutes need to reflect the discussion that was had at the prior meeting. So you're approving to the minutes um, as it as it relates to whether or not that discussion was had. So if you're looking to change the date, if the allegation is that October 8th was not the date that was discussed, then that's what we need to correct. But what if, but if uh, what we're stating is that the October 8th date should be reconsidered, then we take that up when we discuss the item. The October 8th meeting was discussed. Um, the minutes as presented um, or the material as presented from the last meeting had a different date on one item versus the other. So, so if, in understanding what you're saying, we could go forth and approve the minutes as stated um, because they do reflect our discussion last time and then we can circle back on any corrections during the actual domestic violence. Chair Miller. Um Commissioner Burns, yes, there, there is a, a little bit of confusion on the dates, but the meeting minutes are correct. The commission did pass a motion for the 8th, and we'll circle back to that date when we go back to the Domestic Violence Awareness Month activities report. So the, min, the meeting minutes are correct as stated, like Chair Miller said. So Great. thank you. Are there any other changes? Or, can, or is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Can you make a motion? Yes, please? I make a motion too. And we need a we need a second. I'll second it. 
Okay. Um, and why don't we have a roll call? Certainly. Vice Chair Burns? Yes. Commissioner Devine? Yes. Commissioner Kajayan? Yes. Commissioner Wiseman? Yes. Chair Miller? Yes. Okay. Next item on the agenda, please. Item 5, Business Agenda, A, Action Items. At 1, consideration and discussion of sponsorship requests for Fall 2013 Season of Girls on the Run in South Glendale. At A is a motion providing direction regarding sponsorship requests. Would you like a report, Chair Miller? Yes, if we could have a report, please. Sure. Girls on the Run LA is a fitness and empowerment program for girls in third to eighth grades. The after school program includes a fun and interactive curriculum to encourage positive emotional, social, mental, and physical development. The program combines training for a 3.1 mile walk run event with self esteem enhancing, uplifting workouts. Girls on the Run LA has been to the commission in previous years, and um, actually, they were here in the spring of 2013. Uh, requesting sponsorship from the commission for, um, for, for I believe it was Roosevelt um, at the uh, for the spring session. They're back now for uh, con commission consideration for a sponsorship for the fall session for Edison Elementary School. They'd like to. Uh, they're going to have a team in Edison, and they are requesting twenty five hundred dollars from the commission as sponsorship uh, for for the team at Edison. Um, in spring 2013 alone, Girls on the Run served 97 girls in Glendale, and with support from the commission and other donors, 50 for, 55 girls in Glendale received financial assistance this spring, valued at $7,700. Um, the breakdown of the cost for um, the team at Edison is uh, about it's five thousand uh, dollars for twenty girls at two hundred fifty dollars per girl, and three hundred fifty dollars for the facilities usage at GUSD. Uh, the total cost for one team is five thousand three hundred fifty dollars, and uh, projected fees from the um, Edison team is approximately nineteen hundred dollars. So. The Girls on the Run is looking for a sponsorship of 2500 and they'll raise the difference from other donors. So uh, staff is looking for commission direction on whether um, commission would like to sponsor a team this year or for, for the fall of 2013 at Edison Elementary School. Great. And we have with us Elizabeth Sadlin, who's in our audience, who's with the Girls on the Run, who presents to us every year. Um, and I almost want to have you come up here just so we could show the logo um, and the T-shirt to all of the different commissioners. Um, welcome. That's great. Thank you. Welcome. Happy to be with you all. This is the spring season that you um, sponsored, and so there you are, right in the back. Yeah, the sponsorship logo that you provided for our spring season. We also appreciate that we encouraged you to look into South Glendale and that you listened and you went and you formed teams that were in South Glendale. Um, last May, we had after we supported as a commission the Girls on the Run team, I did have the opportunity of attending the 5K at the Rose Bowl and seeing firsthand what that impact was like putting medals on the students or the young girls as they ran through the finish line, what it meant to them, what it meant to their families. Their families actually run with them also. So um, thank you for coordinating that. Now as we look to the business item on this agenda, um, is there any discussion on the sponsorship? Questions? Is this, this isn't the first year you've had. Edison was your first uh, For South team Glendale, in South team. Glendale. Correct. Yeah. Okay. We just knew that it was really exciting to be in Roosevelt for the first time. Roosevelt and Cerritos have chosen to do spring season, I'm sorry, fall, yes, spring season only, so they're not this fall. Um, they'll be returning. And so Edison is an every season team. So you are asking for 2500 for the fall season for the Edison team? Correct. Are there any other questions or comments? Do we hear a motion to consider the $2,500 sponsorship for Girls on the Run? I so move. Second. I'll take roll call. 
Thank you. Vice Chair Burns? Yes. Commissioner Devine? Yes. Commissioner Kajayan? Yes. Commissioner Wiseman? Yes. Chair Miller? Yes. And the um, the 5K, if you could, Ms. Sandlin, if you could just answer one other question. The 5K is going to result in, where is it going to be? It's at Universal Studios on December 8th. And we would love for any of you, um, Chair Miller, if you'd like to return, or any of the others to come and be medal makers and present the medals to the girls as they complete. It's a very fun race. The kids love it because they get to go through the back lots and be able to walk and run through. It's a hilly course, and it's a lot of fun. So December 8th, we'd love to. Is that a Saturday? I think that one's a Sunday. Sunday. Almost sure. Yes, Commissioner Devine. What are your practice days? Because I remember coming down to one of the practices, and it's terrific. If you ever want, you know, we go to Camp Rosie and we visit there. Absolutely. But I think the commission has to go to see that go see your Edison. group of girls because that is like just you know. I the don't know off energetic. the top of my head. What I'm happy to do is check with our staff, and I can get that information to your staff. And all we ask is that if you'd like to visit a practice, just let us know. We'll give the heads up to the coaches, and it's a lot of fun to be able to go. We would welcome you anytime. I'm still waiting for that Arnold. Remember, it was an Arnold yes. monkey <laughs> cheer? Something was so cute. Yeah, the girls do their energy cheers. Yeah. And I would encourage any of you, if you are so moved or interested, to also consider going down to the race and seeing actually the result of our efforts or running the race. Good. I asked you the date because I think there's another 5K. I think that's the weekend of the Jingle Bell Run. And that, that, I'm blessed to have so many options right. in this part of the world. Well, no, I'm thinking of which. I'm thinking of running, and I'm not a runner, so I don't think I can run two races. So I'll watch one and run the other. Well, the finish um, line is a great place to be, whether you walk, I often walk as the sweep at the end, or if you run, or if you're there at the end through the whole thing. It's a yeah. terrific day. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you all so much. We really appreciate it. And we'll keep you in touch with the Edison team so that you can um, provide the connection with the girls. Thank you. Did you have any leftover T-shirts, or did you provide the T-shirts already? We brought T-shirts um, from great. last spring. But Everybody yeah, got them? One, yeah. And anyone who wants more, let us know. We might have perhaps, last seasons or others. Yeah, perhaps for some of our new commissioners, that would be great. Definitely. Uh -huh. yeah. Excellent. So let's, let's coordinate through the staff on sizes, and I could even follow up on that tomorrow. It's a great shirt. I love wearing that shirt. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing it. Thank you all. Okay. Next item on the agenda, please. Next item, 582, consideration and discussion of sponsorship requests for a banner at Glendale Community College. At A, motion providing direction regarding sponsorship requests. Uh, could I have a, could we have a report on the sure. um, next item? Sure. Annually, the Glendale College Foundation um, has a campus banner project that helps them fundraise for the college. Banners are designed and hung on light standards to, uh, at the community college um, and individuals or organizations have the opportunity to sponsor a banner. They have two sponsor ranges, $285 for what they call a random location or $385 for a prime location. And um, the sample banner is displayed up on the screen. These are samples from previous, uh, I believe last year or previous years that we've had uh, or that Glenville uh, Community College Foundation has had. And um, staff is looking for direction whether commission would like to sponsor a banner, which would be displayed at the, the college. We have here Alex Leon from the Glendale Community College Foundation, should commission have any questions or um, comments. And I believe he brought um, one of the banners with him for display. Welcome. Hi, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, the, uh, the screen is nice, but the banner really is more of a visual aid, and I happen to climb the pole to bring one down for you. <laughs> this is our 85th anniversary banner. See, it's a six-foot banner by three-foot wide, and it's a wonderful uh, two-for-one project because it's great advertising for whomever participates. If you can see this on the bottom, this is, uh, we have artwork on one side. This is a Harley Davidson who's been a longtime sponsor. Um, I've coordinated this project for the past 15 years, and it started off as a beautification project for the campus and has grown to uh, support the newly created Student Success Fund, 
where departments and different areas on campus are able to apply for grants through the foundation to help with their needs, whether it be software, classroom needs, any projects they're entailing. Um, where our goal this year is to raise $10,000 to support that fund. As you know, money is, uh, and budgets are very tight at the community college level throughout the state, and we found that this is a way to really support what the needs are for our students. And uh, I've been proud to be part of it for 15 years. Can you uh, describe the difference between a random location and a prime location? Well, since you're talking to the person who decides where the banners go, the prime location would be generally in front of John Davitt, uh, the administration building as you walk in, or at the corner of Carroll Plaza. One of the challenges on campus is that the campus has really grown uh, foliage-wise over the past 15 years, which means that some of the spots that we used to use are not as easy to display, and the, the advertisers don't get the full value, so we have to be very clever as far as where we put them. But I would say that there are still many pr prime spots for the prime location, and certainly every banner that I hang, I, I make sure that it has great visual uh, benefit to the donor as well as to the college. Great. Are there any other questions from commissioners? You've been doing this for 15 years? 15 years. No idea. I think it's fabulous that you do this. And, yeah. and really, I don't know whether your city banners were before our campus banners, excuse me, were before, but you know, we certainly admire what you do as far as when the city ban banners are hung. Ours are a little bit different because they're on a frame where it shows uh, a left and a right side. So the front would be on one side and the back would be on the other, where I believe the ones that the city hangs are just on a, one side of the pole. So we have the benefit of that. So it, it's been a very fruitful project, and, and we're hoping that you uh, see fit to support it. Yes, Commissioner. No, we can support that. Madam Vice, Chair. Vice Chair Burns. Um, 15 years, and is this the first time you've come to the commission? Yes. I'd like to throw out another idea to the commission. Um, I, I'm not sure, but I think the Glendale College Foundation is the umbrella and the Patrons Club has gone in under the foundation. Absolutely. Is that true? Yes. yes. That just happened, though, yes. within the last year. Yes. My, my thought as I was reading it was um, I personally would rather make a donation to the Patrons Club. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I think it would be a much more benefit to have, for example, $500 from the commission going to the patrons club okay. um, rather than a banner. I, we would get as much publicity and it would immediately go to a, um, a student because the, the, I think the patrons club gives twenty twenty five thousand dollars 25000 right. a year yeah, they're, in grants. Right. Their primary focus is raising money for scholarships for, exactly. for community college students. Yes, it is. Yeah. So as I'm reading this, I'm really torn because it's nice to have a banner, but I think the money would be better given to the patrons club. Well, certainly, it's your choice, and whatever you choose to do, we would certainly just a appreciate. thought. Just a thought. I, I there's there's both there's two ways to go on this one. Patrons club has, is a wonderful group. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know how many years they've been going, but. Long time. I would say at least 50 years. Yes. As a support vehicle for the college. When does the 12 month start? The 12 month starts um, October 15th and it, and it runs approximately through next October. So uh, it, it's a long running advertisement. Um, and I think that for that benefit, and certainly we have, you know, 25,000 students at the college, seeing that the community supports us and various partnerships that we have is, is really important to them. So I think that's why it's been so successful. Uh, yeah, I, Mayor Weissman. Yeah, I have a question, you know, thinking about what would be the best way to spend the money. Um, I'm sorry, I'm ignorant of the curriculum at uh, Glendale Community College. Is there a women's study program? Um, is there an area on campus where, where I'm thinking might be a good hunting ground for, for young women who would want to support this organization if, if a banner were located near that sort of a, a I, classroom? Or, I believe there are women's studies 
classes. I don't know if there's a particular program. Forgive me for not uh, being up to speed it's on that. But uh, detail. Yeah, I, I do know. I, I do believe that there are classes in that area. But as far as a particular program, there could be a certificate that I'm not aware of. But uh, certainly that would. You know that that's a, that's a fine idea as well. And and the other question was, um, and actually it goes along whether it's a do, uh, from this commission donation to the uh, uh, patrons club or through this program, can we designate that whoever receives the benefit is is a woman student? Absolutely, um. absolutely. Commissioner Devine. Um I just want to add that uh, the women's studies classes that you have there are excellent. I don't know is, if Dr. Renner is still there, but the commission has gone up there and I have and spoken to the class right. on women's studies a couple of times. And uh, uh, she's an amazing teacher. So I know you have some uh, really reputable Thank instructors. And, yes, uh, she is still yeah. there and she's oh, yeah. the quasi-historian of the yeah. college. And uh, we you know, feel very fortunate that she hasn't chosen to retire at this point, <laughs> yeah. you know, when we have a new superintendent and we're going, still going through so much growth. And uh, yes, indeed. Well, I, I'm of the, and I'll share this with the commission, that, that this is a wonderful way to get the commission's name on the campus. We do our self-defense classes there. Right. You, op you open your college to uh, tours every year for our Rose Camp Rosie girls. Um, uh, what else have we done there? We, you know, we've spoken there. We, we just have a really good relationship, and I think uh, that this would be a great way. And the money all goes in the same pot. And I think as long as that's the case, I think the banner is a great idea for us to uh, to show our um, support of Glendale Community College. Madam Chair, the, the money doesn't go into the same pot. There's two pots. One <laughs> that's hanging on a banner and one that would be going directly to a student. That's where I was coming from. I love the idea of the banner. Maybe we could do both. That but is actually an option to consider um, or to consider doing something around our Jules Lund. That is definitely something we could look at as a commission. Yes, I'm chair. Could join. I agree also to go to two places, the donation banners and Patrons. Patrons Club. When we look at all of, um, I'm, I'm of the mind like Commissioner Devine, when we look at all of the different things that we do as a commission on the campus and we look at the exposure we would get, it seems that in terms of this discussion and this decision, it seems to at least make sense to me for the investment, the uh, exposure that we would get because part of our goal as a commission is also to raise awareness about the commission and to elevate the status of women. And this seems like a smaller investment to in fact do that and to do that with a population that we very much want to really have pay attention to what we're doing here. That sounds excellent. Yes, I, I totally agree with you, Chair Miller, and uh, uh, I think uh, we have to be careful as a commission on giving out money and scholarships and at, at this, you know, at this spot right here in our meetings. I think if we want to give scholarships, I think at the Jules Luncheon, we can revisit this and maybe give a scholarship to a Glendale community, specifically to a woman at Glendale Community College. Um, but I think um, I'm in favor of the banner and the, and the, uh, rec the publicity and the exposure. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that's a element here. Do we have a motion? Is there further discussion or do we have a motion? Can I just have one further yes. question in considering money. And, and again, I apologize for my ignorance. I didn't do research. Uh, what kind of uh, funds do we have available? If, if, you know, if we have a very small um, amount left over from, from the, the luncheon or if, if there are you know, thousands that might afford opportunity to help right. more young people. Good question, Commissioner um, Weissman. And um, this year, in 2013, we have the money available. In future years going forward, we, we may not be able to even ex extend this kind of discussion for this. So uh, when we think about the years, that, the timing on this, and when we might 
look at this opportunity, this would probably be the year. Do you specifically want to? Chair Miller, Commissioner Wiseman, I just wanted to state that for the current year, the commission is budgeted for $36,025. Um, and But it, the, the budget is not specified to one program or another. We don't have a breakdown as to how much is with it for each program. But as a whole, it's 36000 for um, fiscal year 13-14. Okay. I, we'd also like to just extend the, um, regardless of the outcome of this motion, we'd like to let you know, or if you could extend, we as a commission, I believe, would be very interested in coming back up to the campus. You have a wide variety of experience and backgrounds up here, and I'm sure that any one of us could contribute greatly to the Women's Studies program. Now, with that being said, do we have a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we... Um we donate $285 for a banner to be placed at Glendale Community College with the commission's uh, name on it in support of uh, your foundation. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second it. And if we could have a roll call, please. Certainly. Vice Chair Burns? Yes. Commissioner Devine? Yes. Commissioner Kojayan? Yes. Commissioner Wiseman? Yes. Chair Miller? Yes. Can you, um, sir, make sure that that location isn't too random? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Since we selected, right. Since I make the choices and I have the privilege of speaking in front of you, I'll make sure you're well taken care of. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming and your time. All right, next item on the agenda. <laughs> next item is 5A3, Consideration and Discussion of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, DVAM, activities. That A is a motion providing direction regarding Domestic Violence Awareness Month, DVAM, activities. Similar to um, before you, okay, go ahead and, and provide the report, please, Mrs. Alexander. Thank you. Chair Miller. Um, Members of the Commission, there are a lot of activities happening in October for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And um, just to simplify and take it one at a time, I'll start with the first activity which we discussed at the last meeting, which was the Proclamation for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, the City Council Proclamation. I believe um, there is a little bit of confusion because at the last month's meeting I reported that the first Tuesday of the month is October 8th and it's actually October 1st, so I apologize for that. And so um, the proclamation would, since the Commission has previous, historically gone to um, City Council on the first Tuesday, I would like to request if Commission is okay for us to um, choose October 1st instead of October 8th as the date for the proclamation and I already checked and verified with the city manager's office that it would be okay to change the date to the 1st instead of the 8th if commission feels more comfortable with that. Um, so we would go to city council and uh, the mayor would present a proclamation to the commission and um, historically the, the chair of the commission, Chair Miller, would accept and all the commissioners are invited to attend that meeting. So if um, the commission feels comfortable, we'll go with October um, 1st as the date for the proclamation. Do, now, do we need a motion to, um, to change that? And we'll do that. So we're going to take each of the, that was my question. Probably it's best, similar to the last meeting, if we could take each item, since there's so many activities, mm -hmm. report on them, vote whatever needs to be done, on the motion and then go forward. I agree. And, and Madam Chair, as it relates to this specific item, since there was action at the last time, you want to first entertain a motion to rescind and then entertain a motion for the new date. Okay. I would move to rescind the October 8th date. Do you want anything more? And I'll second. That's it. And uh, let's have a roll call. Sure. Please. Vice Chair Burns? Yes. Commissioner Devine? Yes. Commissioner Kajayan? Yes. Commissioner Wiseman? Yes. Chair Miller? Yes. I would move to reinstate or just which word would you like? 
I would move that we have the proclamation on October 1st. Good. Period. Second. Second. <laughs> and given the last motion, it appears that we have a consensus. Okay. So moved. Thank you. So we will have our proclamation for Domestic Violence Awareness Month on October 1st at City Council. The next item. Next Ken. activity that we have for um, in October for Domestic Violence Awareness Month is the Candlelight Vigil, which is a partnership between the YWCA and the Commission. And as reported at the last meeting, um, the YWCA uh, would like to partner with the Commission and the date that we've selected is October 17th. This is the um, this is the flyer from last year so I just wanted commissioners to see the flyer and it will be updated with the new dates. I just didn't have time for graphics to update the flyer in time for this meeting but I wanted the Commission to be able to see the design which is basically the same as we used last year. So the date will be Thursday, October um, 17th and it will be 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The program that we will have this year will be similar to what we had last year and welcome to any suggestions or um, comments from the Commission. And it, last year it, there was uh, the introductions, um, there was a poem reading and the poem was translated I believe into Armenian, Spanish and, and English and it was read at the event. There was a survivor story, uh, YWCA had brought a, a survivor of domestic violence and um, she was able to speak at, at the program. Uh, there was a performance, a musical piece, and the lighting of the candles and a prayer reading from clergy. So the program is um, going to be very similar to, is planned to be very similar to last year's unless there is um, feedback from the commission or commission would like to um, add or, or I guess remove any of, of the components of the program. For the performance or the musical piece, we are looking at um, a potential um, performer, Yana Fabian, who I believe has performed um, at an event that a few of the commissioners had attended. And it would be, um, she would not charge a fee, so it would be free of charge. And so um, I am in contact with her. I, I didn't have a chance to. She left me a message saying she's willing and able to perform on the 17th, and so I will uh, circle back with her to, to confirm that and, and select the piece that um, she will be able to sing. I believe she's a jazz performer. Um, so that will be the musical piece. And I'm not sure if the, the commission would like to also carry out the poem. I know that was done last year, but I wanted to hear from commission if that was still a component we wanted to keep as part of the program. And um, there's also a short film, and I'd like to hear from Commission if you have or are aware of any films that are out there. I believe last year there was one that was um, put out by Avon, and that was a film that was shown at the, at the event, and um, staff will be looking for some uh, potential films that we could show. I, I would say three to five minutes, because it's supposed to be a one-hour program. So if commissioners have um, any suggestions, staff is um, willing to look into that and, and or we will bring you some options. Um, or we'll, I, I'm not, yeah, we, we will be able to present that at the next meeting. I was trying to think if it would be before the commission meeting. So this is kind of what has happened so far since the last meeting. Staff is looking for any direction or feedback from commission on any components of the program or any feedback that you have for the candlelight vigil. Oh, thank you. So again, in, just to summarize on the candlelight vigil and keeping in line with decisions we'll need to make discussion here and then decisions we'll need to make, our next meeting is, um, the, same, <laughs> is the same week, actually. Right, and so I, I think we might have to have that discussion here and then just direct staff. Right, I, I we're looking for direction are. from the commission, okay. but I guess the program will be finalized along with the YWCA. Okay. And I believe historically that's how it's been done. So um, 
did did you did anybody have any input regarding the poem or candlelight vigil or any pieces of it, Vice Chair Burns? Uh, Madam Chair, has this all been discussed with the YWCA? Yes. So anything that you have just spoken about um, has been. Yes. Um, to whom have you spoken? Both Lisa Raggio and Annette uh, Kos Kosher, is, I, I believe Kosher. her Kosher. 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 Sorry. Thank you. Typically, in the coordination of this particular event, um, Ms. Alexani, and those are the two people that she works with. You're the three primary people that report back to our respective groups on on the decisions and where we want to go. So last year the commission was responsible for the poem piece and we, they've asked if we want to continue with that again? Correct. Um, the YWCA didn't have a position one way or the, another for the poem piece and so they wanted to know if the commission would like to have the poem piece or if we... Uh, for it's, it's read in three languages, right? Correct. I, I like that piece um, personally. I, Commissioner Devine. Do either of our ex officio speak Spanish? You speak Spanish, do you read Spanish? Yes, I do. Okay, so we can do that with our ex officios. We have a Spanish speaker, we Armenian. have an Armenian speaker. Wonderful. Okay, so if, <laughs> if the YWCA wants to go along with that, then Absolutely. we have our um, presenters right here. It would be an honor to do that, and I would love to. <laughs> that was all. very powerful last year, I have to say. I, I did I not get a chance to use I, I found the poem to be very powerful. Mm -hmm. So, um, may I ask a question? Yes. Uh, how can we view this poem? Is it on, online or on the website? I should be able to get a copy of what was uh, the poem that was used last year, oh, and wonderful. we'll probably need to select a new poem, or unless we want to go with the same poem. But we can probably select a new poem, and you guys are more than welcome to provide feedback on. Um, uh, Madam Chair, if I may ask staff a question. Was it recorded on GTV6 last year? Would there be an archival f The footage? candlelight vigil? I don't know if it was recorded. I'll have to check in to, to verify, but I, I'm not sure that it was recorded. It was not recorded. No. Yes. Um, I have a question. Is there any way that we can spread awareness about the vigil to the schools? Because I'm sure that there are many students that would want to attend. And if there's any way to have student volunteers there, that can help out with anything, just to make it easier. Definitely. Um, we will have the flyers ready, and hopefully by the end of this week. And so I'd be, I will email those flyers out and would be more than happy if you can help me spread the word by passing out the flyers at school and inviting um, the students at the schools to attend the vigil and be a part of it. It's a very moving event, um, student ex officio Sahakian, and we very much do call on you as, as our student ex officios to really help spread the word within the schools. And um, as soon as that flyers are ready, Ms. Alexanian will be your point person for the coordination of all of that. So you'll let her know where you want to distribute it and where it's going. And I have a comment to make. The only thing that would hold me back from distributing these flyers would be ASB because they do have to approve the flyers before I am allowed to distribute them on campus. So as soon as ASB approves them, I would be happy to distribute them. Great. Great. Yes. And, and the good thing about you being excuse me, on ASB is the fact that even if you can't um, do the flyers, <clears throat> you can still get the different clubs involved that are at your ASB Absolutely. meetings yes. and just by word of mouth have them invite their members to come to the vigil and that would be perfect. Absolutely. And invite them to hear you speak in Spanish at the vigil. <laughs> Armenian. <laughs> and my fellow commissioner in Armenian, yeah. <laughs> it's a cultural experience That's as well as a an awareness towards domestic violence. That's right. Great. Okay. So, just to recap on this particular item on the candlelight vigil, staff has a direction. Um, in terms of the poem, I am reading that there is a consensus on this, and we would like to make the suggestion of our two students ex officios. Um, 
Also, regarding the short film, does anybody have any suggestions for Ms. Alexanian at this time? Or um, all the decision on the film, I guess my direction would be to keep it in the same time frame and to make that decision with the YWCA, and we would. That's fine. Um, I was looking more for feedback from the commission if you're comfortable with having another short film and if there are any recommendations for a film. Be happy to have that. Um, she had, um, Ms. Alexanian has access to um, at least searching for the short films, and, and she'll provide feedback to us on that. Yes. Don't we have the film from uh, Hands and Words from that group on uh, um, on domestic violence, and it's in the um, it, it's told from the eyes of the. Um, husband who, who ultimately kills his wife in a domestic violence relationship. Don't we have that, don't we have that film in our... We may, and I will check and with... it's ten minutes, but it's, it's pretty um, uh, emotional, powerful. It's pretty emotional. intense. It is, yeah. so, but, so that may not be something that we want to show that night. But I'm just saying we may certainly have. an option to consider. Just uh, yeah. just view any yeah. of these films before, yeah. because that is very intense and, and of course, and and I will be working with Lisa Raggio and the YWCA on um, making sure that the film is appropriate for the event. I just wanted commission to know that if you do have any recommendations, that it'd be Vice Chair Burns. I would recommend that we don't decide on that film. There's any number of age group coming to the, uh, the vigil, and it took True. my breath away when I watched it for the 10 minutes. <clears throat> this is not, I don't believe, a film for this particular event. I would scratch that one off. Okay. Just for purposes of planning and also to, um, it, is the film something that Commission feels strongly about, having a film com component as part of the program? Or is it something if we don't find an appropriate film at this time, you feel comfortable leaving that as out of the program for this year? Um, just do we each to, um, speaking up? I am. So just, I have. I'm neutral on that. I would be fine if there were no film. Okay. Also me. Fine. Same with me. Okay. Just a general consensus because I know that the we program have a is not something. General consensus, okay. right? When a program goes, just given the topic matter and given how moving it is and emotional, you know, I think you have consensus here that if there weren't a film that was found, that would be fine. Okay, and, and there'll be time constraints too, so you may not have time for a film. That seems like there'll be a lot of things uh, happening. So, okay, just wanted to have a general. Staff Alexanian, I'm sorry to retrograde, but while we are on the subject of the candlelight vigil, I would uh, I am also fluent in Greek, so I would be honored to say it in Greek. Also, I'm sorry to retrograde. I know we were on a different subject, but. Uh, Okay. Could um, I discuss that with you or the commissioners at any time or during this meeting? I know that for for purposes of, because I know the program is short and all already reading it into three languages would be time consuming and those are the three popular languages in, in Glendale and so yeah. I think for purposes of time and um, I think it would be best to keep it with Armenian, English and Spanish. Right. But. I will keep that in mind if we ever need Greek. It is an only. <laughs> well, and, and thank you for thank offering. you for letting of us course. know you. Yeah, sure. thank you for letting us know you have an additional talent there because. Sure, want I want to ask her if she can speak Korean. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Commissioner Devine would like to know if you speak Korean. Oh no, I don't. Because I would love those, to those learn. languages are selected based on the populations Absolutely, we serve. Yes. But we are pleased to know that you are that your talents continue to unfold in front of us, and we may find a place for that in some other Thank you. aspect. Um, okay, so we have direction on the poem. We have direction on the film. Is there any other discussion on the candlelight vigil? And I don't think you need a motion on this one because I don't you think acted so on either. it last time. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, the next piece that we have um, is the Purple Ribbon event. And um, staff has been working with the YWCA and 
um, with the ARS, and, and I know the Commissioner Devine mentioned the Seroptimists are also interested in, in partnering for this event. Um, basically, we are going, the, the event is going to be, we're looking at the Americana, the Galleria, and the Montrose Harvest Market uh, are the, as the three potential locations of setting up a table where we will have volunteers from these um, organizations that want to be a part of the event or volunteers in general that can come out and help us pass out purple ribbons and um, the resource guide and any other material that the organizations that, for example, the YWCA, if they have flyers or pamphlets that provide information regarding the services they provide uh, for DV, DV victims or women in general, we would be able to pass out at the, um, at the table that we will have set up. The, some potential dates that we're looking at are, we, we, at the last meeting, Commission wanted to look at a Sunday because of the Montrose Harvest Market. And so the couple of Sundays that are options are October 13th, the 20th, um, and the 27th. Uh, just to keep in mind, October 19th and 20th are Relay for Life and also the Love Ride. So that weekend seems to be a busy weekend, and I know that the 13th is um, the start of the... Um, the week with, uh, for no violence, it's, it's the start of the week, I believe, the 13th. And so I know that was one of the dates that we were considering. Um, looking for direction from the commission on, on if you have a strong preference for a date, whether it's the 13th, the 20th, or the 27th, and um, times. We were, I, we were thinking of maybe... I believe the Far Har Harvest Montrose Market is from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if we want to keep the same time, we could do 9 to 2 at all three locations. Um, and I did hear back from General Growth Shoshana today. Um, unfortunately, she said that the, the Galleria is unable to commit to um, any events from October to December. But I got that email um, before this meeting, so I would like to put in a phone call to see if what that is about, and if if there is um, if we will have the ability to still have a presence at the Galleria. So um, I just wanted to let Commission know that that location may not work. But again, I it was right before this meeting, and I didn't have a chance to talk to Shoshana before I came up here. So that we might have the gallery and not be an option for one of the locations, but the Americana and the Montrose Harvest Market are still potential locations. Uh, for the other, the, another location to consider, just two things in your comments. Thank you for checking all that out, and we realize this has been happening in this being a new event that you've been handling things at warp speed in terms of the calls coming in. So, so we recognize that. One thing to consider with October 20th, although that is the Relay for Life event, remember Relay for Life ends at 9 a.m. and that does capture a different group specifically. I can tell you from a health, being in healthcare, I can tell you that I am aware that October 13th there will be a big event. Um, not yet announced, but a big event that this commission will be invited to specifically related to um, breast cancer. Further, um, I, I like it happening after the candlelight vigil simply because it is a new event and it allows us to either have a save the date or have something in our handouts that tells people what we're going to do which might further and better explain it. So I might just ask that the commission consider those two thoughts when you're making your decision about which way to go. Madam Chair, are you looking for the 27th or the 20th? Um, I was looking originally at the 20th when I, the 20th or the 27th were the two recommendations I put forth. If I had to prioritize them, I like October 20th for the reasons I've listed above in terms of its proximity and close following right after the candlelight vigil, people raising awareness, closing out that week of violence. So I, I thought of it differently in terms of that. But October 27th would be fine as well. It would be a nice circle around the whole month. 
Commissioner Devine. Um, I have a question about uh, general growth now and, and uh, the involvement of Lisa Raggio and the YWCA and Michelle, of course. Um, they've already gotten permission for us to be in front of black and white, the store. Is that um, next now that uh, we've heard from general growth management that we can't do an event? Well, yeah. that's exactly what I need to get clarification on because okay. um, Lisa was following up with the uh, with the store mm -hmm. directly, okay. but she did ask me to follow up with Shoshana. Okay. And so that's where I need to talk to Shoshana and also Lisa because I found out, as I said, right before the meeting and Lisa, I wasn't able to talk to Lisa either. Oh. So I need to find out since general growth is unable to commit, according to Shoshana, if that's going to be... Um, a problem for the, the black My woman. understanding is that um, Shoshana is also um, going, to, who is the director. There there may be another director. I believe she's taken. She's, I believe, senior marketing director. I believe she's taken I, another position elsewhere. Okay. So, and I think that happens this week. So I just wanted to invi advise you in your discussion that okay. um, you follow back with the YWCA, they probably have a more daily contact and then be mindful of that. I didn't sure. even think of that until what the date was until you started speaking about her. Another option for us to consider, which I think we could look at, is downtown Glendale. You know, there's a big revitalization to do things in the downtown. There are numerous businesses there that would perhaps let us set up a table as well. So um, the Galleria, of course, is ideal. Um, for the amount of people that go there raising awareness, but we do have other options if we had to consider them. And I will follow up on that. I just wanted to make the commission aware and, and I will follow up with general growth to make sure and verify and we'll consider other locations. So before we talk about who we might partner with, do you want us to, do you want to get a consensus on our date here? Where yeah, the I'm at? Let's, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, consensus so, is good. I, I don't know if we need a, a specific motion. We don't motion, need a motion. But we just need a consensus, consensus of a date. Right. So, yes. I just think this is another uh, topic that you can talk over with with uh, the YWCA and just tell them that we are kind of in agreement for the 20th or the 27th. Do they have a preference? And then just go from there. I did talk to Lisa, and their first preference was the 13th, and then the 20th, and then the 27th. Oh, okay. So I, I think they're comfortable with all the dates if we need to, but I will circle so back with them. So we meet in the middle <laughs> on, the on the 20th. 20th. On the 20th. <laughs> right. Yes. So, on the there's 20th. your consent. There it is. 20th. <laughs> Commissioner Weissman. Uh, yeah, there is another uh, a conflicting event on the 13th. It's the uh, second annual Armenian Korean Festival. At, oh, it's going to be at CD High. Okay. <clears throat> I understand this year, so that that could draw some of the crowd away from the Harvest Market that Sunday. But there's Is always the going to be something else going on, no matter what 13th, day we pick. So if there's a general consensus for the 20th, 20th. then we'll we'll go with the 20th date. Right. Great. And Unless. Yes, Chair sure. Miller, can we now go back to the time and and set a time for? Um, uh, the event. Uh, you suggested that the market opens at nine. It's eight. nine nine to two nine are to the two. market okay. hours. Okay. I don't know how much traffic there is at the Americana at nine a.m. in the morning. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did the that times weekend. all have to be the same? Was that the original thinking around the structure of it, or could they be different? I, I don't see any reason why they can't because. Uh, Commissioner Weissman would probably be at the marketplace, and she can open or get the table set up whatever time she wants to. And then those of us that will be at the Americana or wherever else we are, we can do it according to the crowd. And I think we have to be there at the when there are the most people. We can uh, cast a wide net. So I, I'd say if you wanted to, what you go to the marketplace all the uh, time. Some, sometimes. But what, when, what's uh, 9 a.m.? or? Uh, oh, a, a lot of people who are there actually for the produce get there as early as they can before it officially opens even. <laughs> right. but, uh, and it depends on the, the weather, the heat, when the crowds show. You can't really predict you know, what part of that 9 to 2 is going to mm -hmm. be busy. And of course, um, the shopping centers are, are you know, into the evening, so right. you know, it, it might get better coverage actually to shift 
those those tables there later in the day while I'll be home napping after the market. <laughs> So. Okay, so in terms of the Montrose market, would we have? Can we um, come up with a commitment on the time? Uh, if if you have a nonprofit booth there, you have to be there the whole time. So it's nine a.m. to two p.m. Nine a.m. to two p.m. Okay. And and I'll I'll commit and uh, uh, and I'll make my husband come. To thank you, you so. for <laughs> <laughs> thank you so for that, great. Commissioner Weissman. <clears throat> great. Um, okay, so now moving on to the other locations. We know that the Americana is, is confirmed. I'm still waiting for confirmation from them. Okay, so but can we identify proximal times for these other locations? Did you have any suggestions, Commissioner Devine? I would say maybe from 10 or 11 until 3, 10 to 3, let's say. I mean, that's just a guess. I mean, you know, I don't. I don't this is on a Sunday, on right? Sunday mornings. I know a lot of people are at church. I can tell you that the Galleria, were it to be the Galleria, I can tell you, I know this on firsthand experience because I go to the Galleria at 10 and I'm gone by noon because there's no one there. Well, there are other people there, but I know that I'm shopping more freely. So I might suggest more of an 1130 to 2.30 or 11.30 to 3 or something like that. If we were to look at those other locations, I'm sure that I'm not as familiar with the Americana, but I'm sure it would be similar. Yes. The Americana is going to be crowded after 6. It's crowded in Sunday. Okay, so we're looking at a morning, an afternoon, and an evening. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So, I think you have some direction there moving on the times and you'll get back to us with the specifics. Yeah. If um yeah, I think that's fine. We'll we'll look to see if commission doesn't feel strongly about one or another then if we were to look at a business on Brand Boulevard, I might suggest that we have that our location somewhere in proximal location to Portos. There's a large crowd there on Sunday all day. And I happen to know a business three doors away that I can commit. She just texted me. <laughs> okay. okay. Go ahead. Commissioner Devine. Oh, okay. So why don't we kind of for for um, for right now say that we will do um, 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. at the Americana. Americana. That's a that's a long five day. It's five hours. That's how long uh, Sharon is going. Uh, Commissioner Weissman, sorry, Sharon. Commissioner Weissman is going from right from nine to two. How many are nine? Yeah, it's five hours. Okay, it's five hours. Okay. So we'll do five, five hours. Five hours. I think we're going to have enough volunteers five that it's hours. not going to be a problem uh, keeping those tables open and five giving hours. out ribbons for that long. Commissioner could join. Madam Chair. Now we are speaking about the partnershiping, I guess, YMC, YWC. Can we, oh, yeah. can okay. we commit to the time okay. and then we'll, we'll... Okay, so I think in terms of the direction on that, we're looking at 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on the shopping districts, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the Montrose Market. Okay, and again, because we're working with other uh, age organizations and agencies that this is just um, just to, to make to sure change. right if we need to change the times then of course we'll, okay Absolutely. we just Commission thought you might be looking for some direction of course yes. thank you vice chair burns did you have a comment on the time or the locations just the locations okay it's where specifically are you going to put the tables at the Americana we were looking at in front of Sephora and um, at the Montrose for uh, Harvest Market, I'm not exactly sure because I haven't been able to get in touch with the um, person there that would be able to help me identify a location that would be best for what we're trying to do. So, And so we'll look at Commissioner Weissman to give you input on that. Okay? Great. Yeah. All right. Moving on to who we may partner with. Commissioner Kajoyan. ARS Regional agreed they, are, they like to be a partnership in the Purple Ribbon event for domestic violence, and they are ready to translate all the domestic violence brochure in Armenians. 
and they also they suggested that their logo, ARS logo, to be beside the other, uh, like YWCA logo and Commission Status of Women's logo. If there is a way they can put that logo, or if there is a printing banners or. Well, in speaking of the details, thank you, Commissioner Kajoin. In speaking about the details of this event, can we identify more of the specifics? Can you actually um, identify for us exactly what we're doing and what each sure. group would be give, distributing? Sure. Um, the, the structure of the event, the way that we were planning it would be very simple, just a table set up with a can of bee, and um, we would have a table cover that I know we commission has one um, and so we'd either have to invest in in two more if we would like to have the commission table covers or if the YWCA has their own that they'd like to use at one of the locations we'd be able to use one of their um, table covers but we would order or make and staff recommendation would be to order purple ribbons that we would be able to pass out at the table and we would have um, resources, brochures, flyers, um, little palm cards, whatever we would have available and from the Commission we would have the resource guide that we are updating available to pass out to the community along with the purple ribbons and I'm sure the YWCA for example will have their their brochure or a flyer of the services they provide so they'll have it there at the table um, if, for example, Sir Optimist has their own flyers or information they'd like to pass out, they'd have it available at the table if ARS is coming and they'd like to bring their resources or, or flyers on what they have to pass out, they'd have it available. It's basically letting the community know what services are out there for women and um, for, for domestic violence victims um, if they need it. And keeping it as simple as that, it's reaching out to you know the community and, and Thanks, Iris, for putting up the, the purple pin. Um, but reaching out to the community and, and letting them know that you know, there are services out there that you can tap into and, and together let's break the cycle and, and So specifically, sp specifically, Ms. Alexanian, on the question of Commissioner Kajoyan about the logos, it, because it was always my belief that we would partner with all these groups, but that we would each distribute that which we have, which is related to domestic violence. I didn't have, I didn't ever pick up that there would ever be items that we were making together with each of our logos on it. Can anybody clarify their understanding of this? Yes. Um, well, I thought the, the vision uh, in the beginning was to, uh, this was for the YWCA and the commission, but basically the commission project uh, was the Purple Ribbon event. Um, anybody that wants to come and provide information can be there. You will be self-identified. You will have an ARS sign uh, or a pin on, or you can, you know, they can bring a sign. You will have your information there. Uh, we're not going to have a, 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 a tablecloth or any kind of um, sign that says that this is the Commission on the Status of Women because we don't have it. And I don't know if you want to go so far as to order something for this event. I mean, it would be nice. Well, we have just Commissioner Devine, we just have one tablecloth right. that we use, yes. which is why I said at one of the locations we yes. could use ours. But Cause, well, we have talked about in the past ordering a banner so that we could, you know, have something high enough instead of down below. And if this is the the time to do that, well, maybe we should. But getting back to the main point is that this uh, this the idea is to invite um, groups that want to raise awareness of domestic violence to bring their information. If the ARS has pamphlets, flyers, information in Armenian, then absolutely you should be there. They should, it, it should be there. We, want, we invite you to be there, absolutely. But as far as, I mean, there is, um, you know, you're talking about buying these pins, I guess, and uh, I guess if we do that, then the ARS could maybe contribute to that. But if we make our own, we don't have to buy. I mean, it's 50 bucks, and you can make 300 ribbons. You know, I mean, you don't. We don't have to buy something like that. Um, so, but that's you know getting off. Point. So, so just in thank you, Commissioner Devine. So, in terms of moving along on this purple ribbon event, we does that answer your question about what we would each provide? 
I guess we can provide a tablecloth or some type of banner with the Armenian Relief Society logo. Right. Okay, I would like to add also, I attended ARS Sipan chapter in Glendale. They like to volunteers, but they have a question asking like how many volunteers need it and how they are going to raise awareness and plus they have some question, is there going to be any orientation? But I understood it's very simple. I, and how they are going to, you know, Commissioner the Commissioner Kojayan, yes. I'd be more than happy to contact the person um, at the CPON chapter and, and uh, give them a brief overview of the event and, and ask how they would, if, you know, if they're able to come, what they would like to um, present, you know, at the table, if they have re resources that are available that they'd like to put out there and also, um, I think I'll have a better idea once I'm able to find out how many people I have and what hours they can volunteer at the table. And so, we'll, you know, it's kind of hard for me to say right now I'll need 10 people because it depends on mm -hmm. one person or two, three people at each table should be sufficient. But the more the merrier they can mm -hmm. be there and, and help spread the word. So I don't have a specific number in mind. But I'd be more than happy to contact the person at the CPON chapter for ARS and um, give them more information and find out. Uh, any of the details specific to this actual event, you would be able to follow up with any of the respective groups that we go back to. You'd be able to follow up with Ms. Alexanian regarding those details. I'm not sure that we have to, to get down to the level of how many volunteers per time at this point. What we do need to know is that the event itself, which was born out of the idea with the YWCA, Commissioner Devine met with them and had a discussion and essentially we are raising awareness about domestic violence, inviting collaborative community partners and handing out these purple pins. Is there and information? And information. Is there anything more, Commissioner Devine, that was I just in want the to initial say, discussion? No, I just want to say that this can be as simple as now that we know the times, now that we know how many hours it's going to be, you can simply say to the ARS, okay, we're going to be at the um, Harvest Festival for five hours. We're going to be at the Galleria or wherever, Americana, for five hours. Tell us how many women you want to send to each place, and that's it. I mean, it doesn't have to be complicated. Exactly. Now we get down to, and again, all of those details would be provided by Ms. Alexanian now that we've determined the dates, the time, such. Yeah, I have one point. It, yes. it might be um, very good, uh, particularly for the ARS, um, to provide people, Armenian speakers, for all three locations. And, I mean, Sadly, my husband and I are monolingual, so we'll, we can speak English. But but, but anybody else, um, you know, love you know. Maybe, maybe somebody local to CV might want to come to the Harvest Market and share staffing. And our ex officios are welcome to invite their friends or any of the clubs they belong to as well to volunteer at this event. Okay, Madam Chair. Yes, she mentioned about the purple rib uh, ribbons. Do you like ARS to sponsor or? Well, I think let's. I. These are. I, I did quick research on um, some options that would be available, and and the purple ribbons that are displayed up on the screen are. Um, I believe there it's forty three dollars for a hundred that comes in a pack. So we would be looking at about thirteen hundred dollars if we want to order about three thousand of those ribbons. If we're looking at more than. Uh, Obviously, the price would go out depending on how many we want to purchase. But if we're looking at purchasing about 3,000 of those, um, we would be looking at um, about $1,300 to purchase the ribbons. And I'd, I'd need a motion from the commission to be able to, to spend the money on either purchasing, ordering these ribbons, or if there's um, a recommendation on a different kind of pin that we'd like to order or if somebody wants to volunteer to make these ribbons, because I will be honest, I don't know that we have the staff resources to make the purple ribbons, so I'm not sure if any of these organizations would want to. Yes. Commissioner Devine. Um, I thought, 
that this would be a fabulous project for the girls, the new Absolutely. ex officios, to make, I mean, it's just a matter of cutting the ribbon. And you don't, and all they really have to do is, is make like a hundred of them for every location and then just have the ribbon cut because it's simply a matter of turning it and putting a pin, you know, a pin through it. It's very simple and I thought that would get them involved, right. get their friends involved, their clubs involved. I did some pricing, you can get ten roll, uh, let's see, uh, ten yards for three bucks, and uh, you know, so I figured if we made what like three hundred ribbons, it would cost us maybe forty bucks, so forty dollars. So I just felt right away. I said, "Oh, this is a perfect, perfect um, project for the ex officios." And then I also felt that that would make them, you know, when they pin one on, you know, I made this, <laughs> and it would give you a, a feeling of uh, of being involved. So. I, that's that's my thought on it. Instead of buying, purchasing. Commissioner Devine, that is an excellent um, <laughs> proposition, and I would love to. And our and my club would love to also, and the members of my club would, and I would devote my own time. Um, but I had a question about the distribu dis the distribution along the schools. Would we need extra funding along? Uh, with the ones that we are getting for the for the booths, or is that only selected for the booths, or can we distribute that to CV and Hoover? Good question. Well, the more you make them, I mean, it's just a <laughs> yeah, matter of buying matter. the ribbon. So um, it's a matter of how much have, you make. Okay. So you'd have to make a whole lot more was, to be able to distribute to the schools. And yes. She might. Even, you might even be able to find ribbon on the internet, right, for less than. Then you can get it at Michael's. Amazon is a is a is a fairly yeah. yeah. See, that that you know. So I think if if we keep the cost down and let the ex officios be involved, and uh, I I just think it's uh, a match made in uh, heaven, as they say. Commissioner Burns. She asked me to. Uh, I will let you know. I apologize for that. I was asked to use my calculator. For, um, I was asked to use my calculator by Ms. Uh, Commissioner Kajoyan to divide up the price, and it went right to my radio on my <laughs> cell phone, so I'm going to turn that off. Okay, continue. <laughs> so my tech support already left the room. <laughs> Lovely background so, music. Well, thank you. Can we say something? Madam so what? Vice Chair? Yes, yes, go ahead. How about if we can divide between three organizations this cost? If it's going to cost this much? I'm, I'm a little bit, is it just a purple ribbon with a pin? Is that it? Or is there going to be a pin on the purple ribbon? Which um, you are talking about the one that we'd, we would make? This mm -hmm. no, no, it's just a ribbon with a straight pin. So a ribbon oh. with a straight I was watching pin. TV this morning, and there, there was a talk show on, and they all had purple ribbons on. That's all they were. They were really pretty. They were that's dark purple. They were. And they were, uh, that's all they were. <laughs> that's all they were. Okay. <laughs> so circling back, yes, Director. Chair Breyler, I, I just wanted to, uh, to state that I don't think the budget or the cost is, is an issue. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, may, maybe making this more complicated than it, it needs to in terms of uh, a different entities sponsoring ribbons or providing ribbons or going out to buy ribbons. From a staff perspective, we thought the most uh, time and cost efficient thing to do was actually to buy them online already made. That way there's no quality control issues. No one else has to, has to spend time and energy creating these, these ribbons. Um, and, and we just thought it would be the easiest thing to do. It's one less thing to coordinate if we just purchased them online and had them available to distribute. That's there from, are other ribbons. That's, that's from the staff's perspective. And Director Duran, there are other ribbons that don't include a pin, is my understanding. Now, what I was doing so busily there before the, the radio went on is I was dividing up. Commissioner Kajoyan asked me to divide up the cost. Of, of that. Now, I don't know what sort of direction you have that you can commit at this meeting, but that cost is about 400. You said it was 1300? It's about 1300. But those are ribbons with pins. For, for 3,000 pins. It comes with pins. the pins, yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess I would have to relay, I would have to ask you to comment on that in terms of 
Okay, but then I understood it's very simple that what Ms. Devine said. I mean, Commissioner I'd like to Devine. make a comment, uh, Chair Miller. Yes. I'd rather give that $3,000 to a, a scholarship and not the 3000 or 1300 1500 however much you're talking yeah. about I, I think and just end it let's just <clears throat> well i think we're all in agreement about that let's circle back in terms i think that um, the director was just identifying staff's position so we know that staff will not be able to assist us so the next thing we go to with our volunteer students do you think that you would be able to assist us with Definitely. the creation and the making of the ribbons and could this be an activity that you could own and help us get there through volunteer yes okay we could get other students involved so it wouldn't necessarily be just me and ex officio Mirza Khanian. so we would have a lot of other help and I think I agree um, with Commissioner Devon that it would be a money saving concept and the money would go to a scholarship or some other organization that needs the help. So, I mean, I am open to the idea. I am sure Mirza Khanian is open to it as well. So, sure. Definitely. As long as we get clear deadline dates and, yeah. uh, and a clear amount of how many we you would like to suggest at least. You said a hundred per booth, so we are more happy to make well, it. three thousand ribbons. Okay. Three thousand. Three thousand. Did you say three th well, I was, <laughs> thousand? Did I, was, you? I was saying a thousand at each question. location, but if you guys, if we want to have less, I was going I mean, off the number Miss Alexander right. provided us. So provide us with a different number, and we'll go forward with it. Can we give Honestly, recommendations? I, it's kind of hard for staff to say there will be sure. fifty people or you know a thousand people at each location. It's something that. I can't identify, so I figured if we have at least a thousand at each location, we can't go wrong. If we have extra, we can pass them out to, you know, at staff. A, at other just events. looking for direction from us on the number. The number's up to us. So, does anybody have any suggestion? If not three thousand, what might it be? May I make a comment? Have yes. you got, have you seen commissioners the amount of people who have came to this booth in the previous years, or it's a you, new event? Oh, it's a new event. Okay, and this is only a one-time event. This year. Okay. You're going to be with us as we launch it, and um, through your outreach efforts, sure. there's going to be a lot of people through attending. Commissioner Devine? Very simple. We can make 300 for each location, two or three locations, and then have extra ribbon at the, at the locations, snip it, wrap it, pin it, done. <coughs> Absolutely. Commissioner Weissman? Um, yes, I, I think a thousand per location is is uh, too many probably and Remembering the key thing to this event if I'm understanding it is to raise the awareness so and and perhaps Help someone who's in a domestic violence situation. So the ribbon is the minor thing It's the information and the contacts so that's what we want to make sure we have plenty of supplies for and and the ribbon is just just kind of a, a a way to help people remember. So, so the key thing I think is have enough information, have enough of the the uh, uh, resource uh, flyers and that sort of thing. Sure. And, and that's another reason to have speakers of many languages because that might be an opportunity where somebody you know wants to discuss some situation. Is this really domestic violence, or you know what is mm -hmm. this? And so I think that that the interaction with the crowd Great. is the key thing. Yes. And one more comment. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, Chairman, uh, we're also uh, working. Uh, Lisa Rajo at the Y is working on having a survivor at each location, so that we can also uh, have a dialogue. If, if just in case there's one woman that comes by and and she is in that situation, she will really have someone to talk to. So uh, we're trying to make it that sort of an educational event too. Okay, so the direction on this purple ribbon event <coughs> that we have for staff is that we will have three different locations. We've identified the time, we've identified the location. Um, we have our two student ex officios who are going to lead the charge on creating the ribbons. We'll give them, bless you, we'll give them a, a minimum of 300, but we would welcome up to 500. You'll know, you have the volunteers. If you have a lot of volunteers and you keep going, keep going. We'll have, we'll keep them for next year, in lieu of next year as well. 
Um, and thank you both for, for uh, volunteering for that. So I think we have enough. Do you, do you feel like you have enough as staff direction from us? Yes. Can I just ask for some kind of a budget um, that commission feels comfortable with so that we could go out and purchase the purple ribbons and anything else that would be related to this event? Um, again, if we're not ordering them online, maybe I don't need uh, uh, $1,500, but I'm not sure what other expenses might come up as we plan this event. So if commission feels comfortable with maybe passing a motion for $1,000 for this event and it's not to spend the entire amount, I know that the ribbons don't cost that much if we're just buying pins and ribbons, but just for staff to be able to work with and, of course, bring back a report after the event um, with the expenditures. If you feel comfortable, and, and of course, it would also um, include the cost of printing um, the, the resource guide. Um, Commissioner Devine, did you say you looked up the cost of the ribbon? I did. Well, I, I Two, did. Two ninety nine a roll. So Two dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah, it would be fifty dollars for three hundred ribbons. I figured. I think I was. Yeah. I was going to suggest a budget not to exceed 500 if, if instead of a thousand I was really going to we yeah. have to do the printing how much is the printing that would be these right. oh you're For talking in regard thing. to the resource guide so your thousand dollars was not just based on the budget you're looking for it was okay. it was just for the purple ribbon event in general not specific to the ribbon well, then let's but go the on. event in general just in case items come up that we have not identified right now that we will need a budget for. Then let's go on to the Women and Family Resource Guide and come back and make a motion on the budget at the conclusion. Sure. Can we do that? Can we do that? Okay. The, um, the Resource Guide is, is something that we talked about at, the last, at last month's meeting as well, and I'd like to start with thanking um, the interns that helped us, um, Chair Miller, and the interns that work at Glendale Adventist um, were kind enough to help us do the first um, review of the women's and women and families resource guide that the commission had um, put together, and it is provided to the commission as an exhibit to that report. This is the first draft, and and basically the direction was to go through um, the existing phone numbers and agencies and, and identify um, agencies that we no longer be, um, be in service or phone numbers that may have changed. And staff is looking for direction from commission on new um, categories that we may add. In, in reviewing the resource guide, uh, staff has identified some agencies that uh, we will be adding back and uh, adding to the to the resource guide and and um, identify some agencies that may no longer be in service that we will remove. But again, this was a first draft version, and staff is looking for direction from the commission on again if there are any agencies that you um, were able to identify that are not on this that you'd like to see on here. Um, I know one of the feedback I received from Commissioner Devine was to include the agencies from the report that um, Moises Carrillo provided last month regarding the uh, services for um, women that may have uh, had problems with the justice system, and we'll go ahead and add those resources to the to those phone numbers to this resource guide as well. So, Steph. Um, is looking for feedback from Commission on anything you'd on like any to add or change on the resource guide at this point. The, um, in looking at that and comparing them to some of the other examples that we had that we met through other commissions, well, one of the things that I noticed um, is the National Child Teen Runaway Safe Line. Um, and all of these I'll be providing to you, any suggestions, but just for the purpose of having a dialogue here. Um, in terms of some of the things that come and go. I'd also like to see us add the um, hospitals in. I also have an entire list for you of some more senior services than just AARP. As you know, we have a wonderful senior adult rec center right here in Glendale as well as Far Heights, so we would want that added. 
There are some transportation things that would also need to be added um, in any of those areas. And then there are other items, again, that would be removed. But I have provided you with a, a list um, for you to take from here. Um, those are pretty much under Child and Youth. It would be Glendale Youth Alliance, Healthy Start, Assistance League, We Care for Youth. These are all in Glendale. Verdugo Teen Hotline. Uh, in the Parenting Counseling Child Care, there would be Parent and Teen Support Program, Avenues Pregnancy Clinic, uh, Family Planning Associates Medical Group, March of... Uh, there is um, other commissions have included a Planned Parenthood line. There is a Planned Parenthood Express in Eagle Rock. If we decide as a commission we want to include that. Under women's advocacy, we would want to add the YWCA, perhaps. Transportation would include Glendale, um, the Dial-A-Ride, as well as the Glendale Transportation Center, the access services. We also might want to add in under Mental Health ARC Family Center, um, and then some of the 24-hour hotlines would be the Poison Hotline, uh, there's a Los Angeles Commission on Assaults Against Women. There's a Child Abuse Hotline. There's a California Youth. There's a Suicide Prevention. There's a Rape Hotline. Any of those numbers um, and categories might be helpful as well if we wanted to consider them. Again, we know that staff will be um, taking this project, and so it would be up for your decision in terms of um, which of these specifically under these categories, but these are suggestions for you. You're going to provide us with everything you, you just read off? I have provided copies and an email um, with everything, as well as originals. Now, the first blush through with those students was actually to go through and say which numbers um, are accurate and which numbers are not. These two students, not being from Glendale, wouldn't have known what to remove and what to keep. But what they did do and what you didn't have, what we as a commission didn't have, is you didn't have their work where they highlighted it. This is also for you as well, staff. Um, and you'll see how they highlighted it. There's also, uh, let's see. Also, other commissions have included things like food banks. There is a Valley Food Bank uh, that's in Glendale. There's also Meals on Wheels, if we wanted to consider that. And then lastly, I've included all the information about each of the hospitals in Glendale, so that if you wanted to consider that, you could offer that as well. Thank you, Chairman. Any other? Yeah, um, a Mission couple of um, uh, Essentia, I guess, if you're yes. talking about homeless, right. yeah. uh, should be on here also, our own homeless shelter. And um, um, I definitely support adding uh, Planned Parenthood as a resource. And if um, you want to, I know uh, the long list you mentioned, what uh, um, hit a red flag for me is the avenues. Uh, it's a... Uh, what they call a crisis pregnancy center, and they don't really provide any uh, medical care. So that would have to be under a different category. It, it's an anti-abortion group, uh, frankly, that, that will provide counseling. But but uh, I don't I don't think it it uh, it's kind of like a truth and advertising thing. We should be very careful that that we indicate what services they provide, and they don't provide any medical services. So. So when staff takes our suggestions, again, this commission will get to see this before we go. We would not uh, vote on this until the October meeting, correct? Does that give us enough time for printing? That would probably not be enough time for printing if we want to have it at the vigil on the 17th. Okay, so other than our suggestions today, in terms of removing what to add, what to take away, what would you need from us in terms of a motion or an action at this meeting in terms of moving forward? I don't think, we have a motion to update. Last time the commission gave a um, direction to update the resource guide, so I don't think we need any other direction or a motion direction from the commission at this point other than the feedback that you have. 
So each of the commissioners will provide you with their feedback. Sure. Okay. Commissioner Devine. Yeah. Um, well, since there was uh, there were a few errors on the card, uh, staff is going to re recall all of these numbers and make sure that they're still in existence. Yes, we will verify the okay. information. And I agree with uh, Commissioner Weissman that Ascensia definitely should be on there and Planned Parenthood. I'd like to see a teen or a youth um, category um, that would include Generation Next, Safe Place, um, Break the Cycle, uh, Peace Over Violence, Girls on the Run can be on there because that's a um, um, you know, that's a program that girls in this and parents should know about in, in our city, especially since we help to support it in a big way. A door of Hope for Homeless uh, or for Domestic Violence. Uh, Tom Peters is the, um, I have the numbers for you. And the Red Cross, I think, should be on here because they do. Uh, I also question Assistance League and Catholic Charities. And I'd like to get feedback because they do programs. Uh, I'll tell you what I did. I found this uh, resource that the Parks and Recreation Department did a few years back. And it's full of the numbers. I mean, it's, it's a fabulous resource. And I was thinking that if you just went through and picked out the, the ones, because they're, they're even described in here. And we can, of course, do that on, the, on our, our guide. But just go through and find the ones that have programs that are for women, and children, their families, and girls. And, uh, and, and you don't have to go all the way to Flint Ridge or Los Angeles. I mean, I, we have so many good ones here in our city, too, that, that can be on there. So that's just a suggestion. I'll give you my list um, when, after the meeting. Uh, yes. Chair Miller, what was the commission's vision in terms of how long this list should be or what size or? <laughs> Uh, four pages or what? Go ahead. Did you want to? Based, based on the input that you're giving us just now, it's, it's going to be very extensive. Yes. As, as opposed to <coughs> narrow definitions of organizations and more specific to, to women and family and girly issues, uh, you know, because it, it could end up being as long as the resource guide that Commissioner Devine just held up. Based on, based on all the organizations and suggestions that you've given us just, just mm -hmm. now, it could be that long. The, um, specifically, the vision that I had looks similar to what we already have, but is, can be double-sided. It's similar to this. Doubled. Well, when you view it on the internet, it's, well, yeah, it's, the, the yeah, real it, is real deal. well, it has it. But the um, the font on the one that we currently have, just I'll just tell you, strictly speaking, from an ergonomic standpoint, I know you've been provided with suggestions from other commissions. This one from Marin County, they have a lot of great stuff on here, but this font is just too small, and we have to think, and it's just too small. And so, if the option is to to have someone who can't really read something versus having the most important thing there and, and having to forego, you know, certain categories that aren't as relevant, I would suggest we stay within a font that people can read. We can have it like this. Yeah. So, uh, so my understanding, and on? I haven't seen the version, like an actual printed version of what we had, but it is it does look something like that. It's a bookmark that's front and back. Um, and so it, they'll be cut into smaller, piece, uh, smaller, just like the one that um, Commissioner Devine has. So although you're seeing on paper on a full page, but it basically folded in half and it'll be front mm -hmm. and back. So if we want to get more information on there, the font has to get smaller in order to fit. But again, well, we have well, a little bit. If I may just add, if you also look at the spacing of what Com Commissioner Devine's holding, just from what I understand, if you were to take our suggestions and perhaps look at adding 10 to removing those which no longer apply, adding in and filling those, and then perhaps adding 10 to 15 more, I think you're going to get in the same place. Because if you look at that, the spacing on that, there is a, there's at least five font spaces. A lot of waste. Space. Where 911, yeah, where call 911 is. So I think you'll be able to work it out, but we would leave those details up to you on that. There's a, 
if I may. Yes, there, there's a lot of wasted space. This is all kind of wasted, and then every time there's a uh, uh, a different category, it's a block, and then there's space there too. So there, a lot more can be put on this card. Um, uh, and, and I think the object, um, Mr. Duran, is to make sure that the um, the resources that we and numbers that we provide are for um, organizations and um, uh, helpful uh, assistance that women would need for themselves and their families. And, uh, and that includes all of these categories. And then I think we should also include uh, for teens as well. So that's the, the basic. So I, and I think at the end it ends up being your decision on what's on the card, ultimately. Madam Chair, that's what I was going to ask. Is the is, if this comes back to the commission for a decision, <clears throat> we could spend a lot of time. It wouldn't be printed till December, January, or February, if we wanted to deal with every single one of these things, and uh, discuss whether we wanted it on or not. To me, just hearing what is thought to go on is way. It's an way too much. I, I don't think we need as as many of these. Uh, and and again, I think I don't think that there's any direction to staff on that matter. I think that staff is well equipped. They have a resource guide already that they're using. They are very well versed in this, as well as the city of Glendale. I think our goal. Um, first in this draft copy was to provide them with the ability to verify numbers and not verify numbers and then to provide them with suggestions and to go forth. The only um, feedback they're asking for us on format is how much we really want to add. The only thing I've weighed in on is I don't want the font to get so small that you can't read it. So um, if anybody else has comments along those lines that they want to jump in, I think staff uh, has direction in terms of going forward. Have all the commissioners seen the font? Yes. No. So I have it too. I, I can read this, actually. This is um, the, uh, I have another. Yes, Commissioner. Um, the, these were designed to be like palm cards. The, the, these are, were not designed really to be bookmarks. They are, they, we were ahead of our times in palm cards. And so the idea is to fold them like this and put them in your pocket or your wallet, uh, and have them with have this information with you all the time, and so um, that's why I, I like this Marin County because they have the um, commission information right on the top, and then you just and then when they when you give it to someone, it's folded, so they get the idea immediately that if they fold this, and they can put it in their purse or their wallet and. Uh, and that becomes useful. And if not, then it can just sit. If they don't fold it, then it can sit flat. But this, I think, is a really great uh, format. What do you think of the font? Small. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, that being said, I think in terms of this discussion and because of the time, does staff have enough information from us in terms of proceeding? And we all agree that staff we all agree that staff will be taking us into the final piece that we'll distribute in October. Is that correct? Is that everybody? Okay, thank you very much for providing us. And here's a whole pile for you to decide what thank fits you, and what works. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we need to make a decision. To close out Domestic Violence Awareness Month activities, we need to make a decision and give staff direction on a motion for money. Oh, okay. I was just going to say I have two more things relating to October and Domestic Violence Awareness Month, but I just... The finances that you would need were for the Purple Ribbons and for the Resource Guide, right? Right. Why don't we go ahead and make a motion on that, and then we'll go on to the last two items. Sure. Okay. I'll go ahead and do that. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'll make a motion that we um, instruct staff um, to um, spend up to $1,000 on the... Um, a domestic Violence Awareness Month events, including the Purple Ribbon event and the Resource Guide. And we need a second? I'll second that. And do we have consensus? Let's have a roll call, please. Sure. Vice Chair Burns? 
I'm not quite understanding. I thought it was you were asking for money for the Purple Ribbon event only, and it sounds to me like it's this thousand is going to be spread out over the well, different the different events. Commissioner Burns, the resource guide would be part of the Purple Ribbon event as well because we would need to get it printed to be able to pass it out at the event. So we're we're generalizing the thousand dollar up to a thousand dollars to be used for the purple in planning the purple ribbon event which would include the ribbons and the resource guide. I'm sorry, I'm still not quite following the uh, the rationale. It's either all going to be the purple ribbon or you you'll probably want more money. For the in all the events, no, you just need a just, thousand for all of the events. I, I think a thousand dollars right now would be sufficient for. And you'll um, come back if you need more. Second, I'll second that. Can, it's the vote. You motion and a second. There's a motion and a second. I think we're doing roll call now. We're doing roll call. Vice Chair Burns. Yes. Commissioner Devine. Yes. Commissioner Kajayan? Yes. Commissioner Wiseman? Yes. Chair Miller? Yes. Okay, there are two other items in domestic violence awareness. Just quickly, I just wanted also to announce that the Glendale Police Department um, will be purchasing and um, wearing lapel pins um, with a purple ribbon on it and in, in standing with the commission for raising awareness for domestic violence in the month of October. And uh, they'll be ordering 500 um, lapel pins that they will be distributing to their staff to wear in the month of October um, to stand with the commissions. And, and also, the other item is um, for social media. Um, we know that social media is a great avenue to help raise awareness, and, and sometimes social media is also used to bully or torment or harass. And so, to be able to use social media to turn that around, um, we're also looking at, with, um, again, with the YWCA, because the commission currently does not have a Facebook or Twitter account specifically, but the YWCA does, and so they will be um, posting um, articles, facts, um, stories, information relating to domestic violence in the month of October. Um, and the city, either once a week or as often as we can, we will repost the same information on the department, the community services and parks, um, Facebook account and Twitter account, and also the cities. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll be working with the YWCA on, on also raising awareness through social media. Commissioner Devine? Um, I, I'd like to thank... Uh, Captain Todd Stokes for taking this uh, purple ribbon suggestion badge to the police department, to their staff, um, their command staff meeting. And uh, it's the first time that they've ever done this with the commission, and I just think it's uh, wonderful. And uh, uh, Lieutenant Lola Abrahamian is going to try to uh, get a police presence at our Purple Ribbon events so that the police officers are there with their pins and, and, and answering questions for the public as well. And, of course, we have to thank the chief because without his permission, nobody would be wearing the pins. So um, thank you to all of them. It's a, it's a great Great step in the right direction for domestic violence awareness. Thank you. Okay. Did you, Commissioner Kajoyan? Uh, Ms. Alexanian, she just mentioned about YWCA. They, have, they can announce it in their Facebook. or The same thing, ARS, we have the Facebook, and we have all kind of email. We can send it if it's, the commission agree with that all the flyers or awareness for a month of October? Um, sure. I mean, we can, I can provide the flyers and the information. Yes. The postings will be done by YWCA staff. It won't be done through, through um, myself. And so if ARS would like to take on um, raising awareness through social media and posting yes. or um, reposting the information that the YWCA will be posting, that would be great as well. Unless the commission feels like that. 
Okay, so that um, you did not need any action on any of those items. So that closes our discussion on Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So next item on the agenda. 5A4, consideration and discussion regarding the 2014 special focus of the Commission on the Status of Women. At A, motion providing direction regarding the 2014 special focus. Now, I know that I, I know this is in the September agenda, but I did want to ask the commissioners, given that we have two new students with us, if we might consider um, putting this on the October agenda in the interest of time, as well as allowing them to go away to get familiar with what some of our themes are and also coming back with any recommendations that they might suggest as well to us. Or our other option is to proceed as is if anybody had has done some work around this and, and had a theme that we thought we were uh, would vote on. This is this is fairly important in terms of how it sets our agenda for the next year. So if there isn't one that's an entire consensus, my thoughts would be that we would move this to our next meeting. Any feedback? Discussion? Um, yeah, I think it would be fine to move it to the next meeting. We we're already a couple hours in. Great. The tonight. Okay. Um, anyone else? Okay. So then, the the most the direction that we will give to staff on this is that we are going to move this to the October meeting. This will uh, this allowed us the book given that we. Um, you know, what the viewing audience may not be aware of is that we have to go into this level of detail at our meetings about our events because of the, um, that which we function under, and that is the Open Meeting Act. So we have to go, we can't meet as a commission outside of our meeting here, and we have to have all of our discussions here. So although it's been very detailed, it's only a preview as to what the actual fullness of the month of October is. So that, that being said, our time was well spent and where it needed to be spent. We're going to move this to the October agenda, and we will go to the next item. 5B reports for information only at one Commission on the Status of Women's 2013 Master Calendar of Events. The Chair Miller, the, the calendar is provided, and it's just an up, it's updated with the information. And um, originally, the calendar did not match the the report on the domestic violence uh, proclamation, but now it does because it was listed there as October first. So, um, if, unless there is any feedback from Commission. So we've spent a great deal discussing during this meeting what our October events would be. November is our uh, veterans. Our theme is veterans and supporting women returning from duty. We know that we have some great community partners who are specifically doing work with veterans, and they might be good to come and speak here um, in our efforts to them. And then December is international human rights. Any commissioner is welcome to provide myself and Ms. Alexanian any suggestions for any speakers that you might have on any topic, so please feel free to do that. Okay. Uh, yes. Madam Chair, November uh, appears to have uh, uh, meeting is canceled. Yes. Okay. Oh, our meeting in November actually does fall on Veterans Day this year. So it is canceled. So it would be canceled. So we can either um, we can either have a special meeting or we can keep it as such. Yes, I, I was going to say just as you said, Chair Miller, um, it's up to the commission. If you'd like to reschedule for a special meeting, we can look at some potential dates and bring that back in October um, for discussion for for approval, or we could cancel the meeting if. Commission so wishes. Could we bring that back in October? Actually, Chair Miller, that's something that you can set unilaterally at some later time. Great. I like those unilateral <laughs> minutes. They happen only momentarily. Thank you, Ms. Farpetian. All right, with that being said, um, if we could go on to our next item. Item six, Commissioner Staff Comments. Okay, well, October is going to be a very full month in September. August and September were equally as well. Um, I would like to point out we have a couple of photos that were submitted by Commissioner Kajoyan 
I submitted a few. Um, just and on August 28th, Commissioner Weissman, Kajoy, and Devine, myself, and Council Member Laura Friedman attended a reception hosted by Assembly Member Holly J. Mitchell, Academy Award winner Gina Davis, and the California Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. This event showcased the work of the Revived Commission and their dedication to the women and girls of California. With the help of the California State Legislature, the Commission will continue to improve the lives of women and girls in the state of California through education, outreach, and policy change. It was a lovely event. It allowed us to reconnect with many of the commissioners that, that both Commissioner Devine and I met at the National Conference, as well as the highlight meeting Ms. Gina Davis herself. She is a great um, advocate for the California Commission and um, just a very good chair in terms of representing our events. It's running on a continuous. You can, you can okay. Um, I also wanted to point out that on September 7th, this past weekend, the, um, we had a speaker here in July, Forest Lawn, and they came and spoke about the LA woman yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Over the weekend, they had an opening reception for this art gallery. Um, Ruth Weisberg, who is actually a professor at USC and very well known, came and spoke about the event. And one of the most profound things that she said that I at least want to share here in these comments is that she credited Jonah Don, Jonah Don, who's, who is here at our Forest Lawn in Glendale, with naming this LA woman yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Meaning that the yesterday and today artists really have had to really fight and push and advocate for any of the time that they've given. Miss Adon was a visionary enough to really involve those artists of tomorrow. So go and check this out at Forest Lawn. Um, it's a wonderful museum. I'm sure that you may know it was voted one of the top ten best free museums in the United States by Yahoo by the Yahoo group. So that's a big deal. And we have it here and you'll see those doors that uh, are the complete replica of those you would see in Italy. Uh, also, we have Glendale Healthy Kids coming up. Make your reservation. We have this over two weekends and we have many commissioners attending and involved. Um, I know that other commissioners will speak about this, so I'll let them identify the website. On September 17th, we have Nordstrom at the Americana at Brand. We have our gala, September 17th. You don't have this in your comments? I'll, I'll bring it up. Glendale Healthy Kids, if you need a seat for one of these wonderful dinners to support this group, go to www.glendalehealthykids.org slash RSVP. So www.glendalehealthykids.org slash RSVP. September 17th, Nordstrom at the Americana. This is the proceeds of this reception. The actual Nordstrom's opens to the public on the 20th, but there is an opening gala and reception on the 17th. The proceeds of this reception are going to the two organizations that they identified, both Hillsides and Ascensia. There's another... Um, September 19th, the YWCA. They're having a free workshop for female veterans. Their goals are to select goals effectively, create a plan to achieve goals, and overcome challenges and setbacks. The RSVP information is to Victoria at 855-231-9500. That's 855-231-9500. This is an event, again, that will be at our Glendale YWCA on Thursday, September 19th. Keep in mind that National Voter Registration Day, National Voter Registration Day is September 24th. As you know, August 26th marked the 50th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which was the right to vote. So make sure you... Uh, Pay attention to National Voter Registration Day on September 24th. 
couple of other things I also wanted to point out to the rest of the commissioners. We received notice today that we as a commission are in good standing, dues and membership for our national association. Uh, we also want to congratulate uh, all the recipients of the Business Life Achievers. We especially want to congratulate the following promotions in the Glendale P Police Department. Captain Carl Povolitis, who's become Deputy Chief. Teresa Goldman, who's moved to the Police Division Civilian Commander. We especially want to remember this coming week, 9-11. There will be a memorial, a moment of silence in honor of September 11th. It'll take place from 9 to 9-15 in Perkins Plaza. And again, keeping in mind all the families and the, those that they lost. And those are just a few of the things that are coming up. So let's, um, Commissioner Weissman, let's start over here with you. Okay, just a few things. Um, I wanted to let people know the ACLU um, local chapter is called Pasadena Foothills, but it includes uh, Glendale. So if anybody is interested, they meet uh, every other month, and the next meeting is uh, tomorrow. And the topic is economic justice as a civil liberties and rights issue. And um, uh, Hector uh, Viagra, the ACLU Southern California Executive Director, will be one of the speakers, as well as Veronica uh, Carrizales, a Policy Director of California Calls. And those meetings are Tuesday evening at uh, 7 o'clock at the Neighborhood Church in Pasadena. And um, I recommend uh, attending if you'd like to be involved in that kind of thing. And the other event coming up is um, League of Women Voters, Glendale Burbank. Um, they're having a members event, Healthcare 101, Learn About the Affordable Care Act. And that's Wednesday, September 25th from 6 to 8 at Panera Bread uh, right here on Brand, 300 North Brand. And uh, it's, you know, buy your own dinner there at Panera and then join the discussion. So uh, please join me at either of those events if, if you're interested. And I did, uh, we weren't able to go to the um, reception on the 7th, but yesterday we went through the art exhibit, the women, LA women, and it is wonderful. And it's, it's just wonderful to remember what gorgeous views there are from the uh, uh, museum grounds up there at uh, Forest Lawn. It had been a long time since we'd been there, so I'm, I'm glad that art exhibit happened to get us up there. So. Commissioner Devine. See you next month. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Kajoyan. I guess I attended many events last month. Okay, with uh, August 14, with a group of Armenian Relief Society members, we attended uh, networking reception on partners in health and senior care hosted by Glendale Adventist Hospital. And we had opportunity to meet uh, community leaders and business owners, community physicians, and other professionals who provide services or product to our senior community. And the director was Chair Miller. And August 19, me and Commissioner Devine, we attended dinner reception hosted by uh, Armenian American Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the honor was uh, Congressman Adam Schiff. It says, meet and greet your congressman. And it was uh, good networking. We met some uh, representative from different organization, which will help us for our future. It will benefit us for our future projects. On August 28, also, I attended with my fellow commissioners the dinner reception, the California Commission on Status of Women. We had opportunity to meet chair actress Gina Davis. And I was so happy that she announced that they got fund $500,000 from uh, a state legislator. And also I had opportunity, and there was a lot uh, representative from different organizations. I met with Ms. Sandra Flo, and she's attorney and social justice advocate of women trafficking. And we had a long discussion. Also, I met, uh, I had the opportunity to meet with Ms. Sally Fairman from the Unusual Suspect Theater Company, which uh, their mission is to empower youth and uh, 
give them positive and uh, to be a productive in their uh, members of the community. And both this woman, they said, if there is any problem with this in your community, they are very happy that they can help us. On September 5th, with Chair Commissioner uh, Miller, we attended grand opening of Dr. Uh, Emil Evanes Clinic, which called Harmony Health MD, hosted by Armenian American Chamber of Commerce. And it was also good networking. Thank you. Chair. Thank you. Vice Chair Burns. Am I going with you? Uh, oh, darn it. Well, we'll just go ahead with Glendale Healthy Kids, a reminder of the dinners. I believe the female vets are coming up September the 18th. The mic's on. Would you, would you check that? I think September 18th at the YWCA rather than the 19th. It's 19. Pardon me? 19. I have it down as the 18th, so I'd kind of like to know for sure. It's setting goals for... Um, female or, or women veterans coming, coming home. The YWCA? Yes. You have a different date than the one listed on there. Let's see. I but I'd like to just make no, sure no. that you're right Why? and I'm wrong. You could, you could be right. Can you pull back up that slide? Great. So go on. I'll go on. The Women's Civic League, uh, September 26th. Adam Schiff, Congressman Adam Schiff, is the guest. And we've already mentioned Nordstrom's with Essencia and Hillside. On the 30th of September, the Woman of Achievement is coming up at the Hilton. And there are a couple of phone numbers. If you would like to make a reservation, 818-240-7088. And I think there is a, um, ah, yes, an online, www.businesslife.com, if you're interested in attending the awards luncheon um, on the 30th. I don't think anyone's mentioned the fireman's lunch at the Hilton October 2nd. And I think that's it as far as I'm concerned. The date that I have on my list, if I set, uh, the date I have written is the 19th, if I said it incorrectly, certainly, but it's the 19th. I'm wrong. You're right. <laughs> I think We're both right. right. How's that? It's easier. It probably will be an excellent hour or two. Commissioner Devine? I just want to uh, follow up on uh, the business life awards. Uh, one of the um, recipients is a former commissioner, Ruth Sobey, and uh, she served on the commission for three years, I believe, and she's well deserving of this uh, award, and uh, congratulations, Ruth. Oh, thank you. I need this. Um, are you making another comment now, or are we going no, I just wanted to make sure that dating abuse, common and complex, um, this is to be handed out to the commissioners for a discussion next month. All right. In closing, we do want to make sure that um, we do want to thank and welcome our two new students ex officio. This particular, um, this particular meeting probably holds the record. I want you to know that perhaps this is the most that you will ever have to see. But please keep in mind that we had a number of events added to October. We can only hold our meetings live, all of the details, and so we have to go through this process as we have. So thank you for that and for going the distance. I think one of the, the things to close with is to think about, um, when I looked for a quote, I was thinking about the month and all the things we're going to do and all the things that we're up against. Please keep in mind that in the words of Maya Angelou, who said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And with that, as we proceed forth in our October month events, and we represent the commission, let us go forth and remind people about what it is we do and make them feel happy about it. And with that said, do I have a motion to adjourn? Meeting so is adjourned. Right.